Josh Cartu. I'm a Ferrari racing driver, entrepreneur. It's quite a logistical challenge. I mean, you're going from town to town. Uh, staying in a different hotel, you've got to bring your bags, you've got to make sure your car is set up properly, and you've got to make sure that you and your teammates don't kill each other because you go through a lot of stress, you don't sleep at all, uh, one or two hours per night maybe. You wake up, you get back in the car, you just want to check if you've been drinking, so we've got this breathalyzer in the car and we check and make sure that you know there's no alcohol left because at night you're partying and try to get to, try to stop drinking around 2 a.m. so that when you get in the car you you know you're you're clean it's it's quite a it's quite a challenge even if you start on time because sometimes you know you get delayed there's a traffic accident you get pulled over by police i mean there are a million things like blowing a tire that can just ruin the whole day so everything's kind of got to come together I think the most important thing, the most challenging thing about doing a rally like this is on very minimal sleep and, and just a total exhaustion, being a good guy. <laughs> like really, the, the hardest thing to do is like to continue being a good person. I mean, it's really tough. The smallest thing aggravates you. I mean, you imagine three days, very little sleep, you're driving, 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 and just people do things that piss you off and you just, you really have to keep it together. After being totally exhausted, just being a good guy. I'm a little strange compared to um, the other drivers because I don't let anyone drive even one kilometer. I drive the entire 5,000 kilometers myself. My co-pilot's there um, to give me uh, emotional support, be my friend, um, <laughs> help me with, uh, with navigation. I'm on a radio and so we almost never play music. So the car is actually completely quiet the whole time, very boring inside the car um, because we're not doing anything, uh, listening to music or partying. It's just literally driving, listening to the noise of the engine and speaking to, um, speaking to my teammates uh, with, uh, with the radio. It's uh, really, really quiet cool inside the car most of the time. You could be driving on the highway for like a straight long period of time and that's super, super boring. I hate that part. Um, but. I guess if I have to think about it, the most awesome part about it is arriving to a crowd of like tens of thousands of people and hearing like, you know, people shouting you know, wolf pack or shouting your name. And I mean, it's, it's really surreal to be like famous for a week and then go back to being a normal person. I mean, it's really crazy how many people know who you are there. It's, it's, it's super humbling and, and really um, quite an emotional feeling, I mean, the power of it. It's super intense. I mean, you get out of your car and you put your hand in the air and people are just like shouting and screaming. And it's, it's crazy, it feels amazing. For me, um, since I race in the Ferrari Challenge, the base of the car is a 488. So I'm the most competent in a 488. It's a car that I have the most kilometers in, I'm the most comfortable in, and I can drive the fastest and the safest, um, and I know the car better than I know any other car. So that was really the, the best car to choose for me, um, just because it matches my style of driving you know, so well. But if you just have a Ferrari, congratulations, you're like everyone else in the rally who also has a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a Porsche or a McLaren. So you need to do really, really interesting stuff to your car in order for it to be special and stand out. And um, there are two ways to do that. First, um, you want your car to be as fast as possible, but also reliable, so you need to modify it in, in all kinds of different ways that suit your driving style. So for me, um, I went to Novatec Rosso. Um, they, did a power, um, they did a power upgrade to just over 800 horsepower. Uh, in addition to that, it had a full system Inconel exhaust. It had um, wheels, which were custom made actually for the car. Uh, from a company called HRE, three-piece wheels, super light, but also that were built specifically for the car. So it's not like you buy wheels and they just stick them on the car. They're made from the ground up um, to fit the car and to be as light as possible. 
So we did some suspension work as well. We did springs, we did dampers. We discussed, you know, we were gonna drive over some really, really uh, rough roads. So we didn't want the car to be too low, but my co-pilot, we, we needed to consider his weight, so we didn't want the car to be too high either. So a lot of considerations, um, building a car around uh, two passengers that, you know, are around combined about 200 kilos, right? We played with the camber a little bit, we played with the caster, we played with all of the suspension settings to make the car um, as perfect as possible given all the circumstances. Tires as well from Pirelli, um, special tires from them were fitted. So the car looked really cool, I think, but it was extremely uh, performance uh, based. I love leaving London. I think the biggest following of Gumball in the world is where it was created. Uh, Regent Street, London, three million people over the course of a weekend come to see that. My hometown in Hungary, arriving to Budapest, um, obviously quite emotional for me, pretty heavy, a lot of people there. Um, and then of course the greatest party ever, winning the Gumball um, with my team, uh, Wolfpack, would be the Namos party in Mykonos, which was absolutely crazy. I think we were there for 24 hours. Like imagine arriving to a party and, and, and partying for 24 hours straight. That was, that was pretty crazy. I mean, I'd never been to a party that good or that much fun. Everybody was having that good of a time. I mean, if you looked around, people were just going crazy. It was nuts. We took over the Namos completely and I think it was the biggest party they ever saw there ever.